Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the zonal mean winds then we'll have a look at the NAO, the AO and then we'll have a look at the GFS, GM, ECWF, GFS ensembles and finish up with the UK Met Office 5 day precipitation and temperature. Now in today's video we're going to see that the GFS has thrown a bit of a spanner in the works. Now the last sort of 5 days we have slowly been seeing the trend a much more powerful polar vortex at least at 10 hba up in the stratosphere which if it coupled with the surface we would be seeing a lot of westerly winds and the latest model output that we've seen over the last few days has reflected that more westerly winds coming in breaking down the high pressure we have at the moment for the end of january start of february with a very positive ao um, and a slightly positive nao meaning quite stormy conditions especially in the north atlantic potentially coming towards the uk at times but today's gfs runs including the samples are showing there could be um a big difference from that we could be seeing that for a time of course but beyond that we could be seeing things go very blocked potentially with the ao on the latest gfs ensemble run going very very negative remarkably negative almost almost, almost as if we had a sudden stratospheric warming which as i'll show you in a minute we're not seeing but very unusual blocking patterns appearing on the latest gfs and even appearing slightly on some of the uh, on the eastern wf and the gm run at day 10 so have a look what is going on um, so yeah, do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe, and remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description, also do check out the podcast, which was, um, put out earlier, looking at the impacts from the Tongan volcano, potentially on our climate, um, that is a very interesting podcast, so do check that out, but if we do start, have a look at the zonal mean winds, you can see what we've been looking at at the moment, with very strong winds up in the polar vortex and those have continued on the latest runs you can see on the left these are the raw wind speeds getting up towards 55 to 70 meters per second and you can see on the right these are the anomalies anything in the red is above average westerly winds um, and anything in the blue is below average so not as strong as we'd expect and you can see up in the atmosphere 30 10 hb up to 1 hba very very strong westerly winds above average westerly winds with a lot of reds we're seeing it at the moment and they're going to increase in strength through the first days of february but on the latest run we're actually seeing towards the surface more neutral uh to very weak westerly winds and if you have a look at the anomaly around minus 5 to minus 10 meters per second slower than average and that's what we were not seeing over the last few days now this could be an anomaly gfs run but as we'll have a look with the ensembles and the other runs this may not be an anomaly we could be going into much more block patterns on the surface and this coupling of the stratosphere and the troposphere that we haven't seen so far this winter that we might have expected in the upcoming weeks could not be happening and we could keep those very strong westerly winds up in the upper end of the atmosphere whether it's towards the surface it goes a little bit more blocked now be before that it still does look generally westerly so i'm not saying there's no westerly winds coming up just perhaps it might not long last as long as some are expecting i've seen a lot of people saying winter is completely over i have said that over the next maybe week or two there's very unlikely to see any colder weather but this may be, be giving a, a bit of a glimmer of hope, potentially, for the first half of February. Now, if we do have a look at the NAO, this hasn't changed too much. As we've looked over the last few days, it's been neutral at the moment, and it's going to stay around neutral to slightly positive. Um, and that's going to basically mean we're going to be seeing slightly above average low pressure uh, or strength in the uh, low pressure to high pressure um, gradient in the North Atlantic. So, i.e., more low pressure, more westerly winds. A couple are going negative, but the majority are staying around neutral to slightly positive. So low pressure is going to be out in the Atlantic, whatever happens. But if we have a look at the AO, remarkably, we're seeing some go extremely negative for the first few days of February. And that's exactly where we saw those uh, below average zonal winds from the latest GFS operation run. We're seeing that from its ensembles. Now, it's going very positive over the next week or so. So that's why there's still going to be quite a lot of westerly winds around um, beyond the next maybe five days. The next five days still looks like high pressure dominated. Beyond that, westerly winds definitely returning for many, especially further northwards. Further southwards, it all depends on how the high pressure holds on. But definitely further northwards, a lot of westerly winds. And then we see an absolute 
um, drop in maybe half than some members. Some going slightly negative, which would give blocked patterns. Some going extremely negative. And that's the sort of pattern, as I said at the start of the video, we'd expect of after a sudden stratospheric warming with massive blocking, pushing all that cold air locked up in the Arctic down into the mid latitudes. Doesn't guarantee cold weather for, for the UK, but definitely does increase the chances. Um, as we'll see with the GFS run in a minute, shows a very negative AO, or at least more blocking patterns, and we'll see the cold weather just misses the UK, as we'll see that in a second. But very interesting. This was showing very positive, um, even just a couple days ago. This, so this is very, this is flipped in the last 24 hours. It could be an outlier. Um, it could be outlier runs. But when we have a look at the operational runs in a minute, You'll see there are hints of that even at day 10. So I suspect some of these are outlier runs, but I don't I don't suspect this whole um, sort of flip to potentially more negative AO um, is a complete outlier. We wouldn't be seeing maybe half of these ensemble members, maybe even more going very negative. So we'll have to see how it does play out. But extraordinarily negative, I must say. Minus four, some even getting slightly below that. Um, that is truly negative AO patterns. That's massive blocking. So we do have a look at the GFS operational run. Now this is the run that's just come out. 12Z, it is fresh, uh, just coming out now. And you can see high pressure over the top of the UK at the moment. And we had a cold northerly wind over the last few days, but that has dissipated. And you can see the strong tropospheric polar vortex just to our north and our west. And you can see by uh, uh, sort of middle of next week, we're starting to bring those westerly winds back in. You can see the high pressure to the south is trying to hold on, but generally further northwards, much more flat westerly winds. You follow those ice bars coming out from the North Atlantic. Very strong purples to our north. Very compact westerly flow with a strong tropospheric polar vortex. However, beyond that, we see a little bit more amplification. We see that per those purples stay towards northern Canada. Um, but very interesting, we start to try and build a bit of a Scandinavian high. Doesn't come off, as I said a minute ago. This GFS run doesn't quite produce bitterly cold conditions. But if we did have a look at the upper air temperatures, you can see very cold air spilling into North America. And there is very cold air going into Russia as well. Those westerly winds are still pretty strong in the North Atlantic. We can see we are a little bit more blocked. But the interesting thing is to go to the Northern Hemisphere view and run it back. You can see an intense low pressure, these purples right over the North Pole. Not a lot of application, a little bit perhaps to parts of Alaska, but really not a lot of application at all in the jet stream. But we run it on to day 10, and you can suddenly see those purples are getting fragmented out, some going out towards um, eastern Russia, and a lot of it's going towards northern Canada, Greenland, and you see a big lobe of high pressure coming up from Alaska, from the UK, parts of um, Russia, and you see right over the North Pole, we do actually see high pressure, um, and you can see these purple lobes all stretched out, not in a circular shape that we're seeing them at sort of in sort of five days' time. So that's that negative AO um, with more high pressure going into the Arctic, and, that, and that, that's basically what negative AO is, and you're seeing these cold air plunge out, and if we do have a look at the 850 HP temperatures, all this bitterly cold air plunging out into North America, bitterly cold air plunging down into eastern Russia, cold air going into parts of Central, Eastern Europe as well. And if we do have a look at the ancient 50 HP temperature deviation, you see all that bitterly cold air towards North America. Real minus 10, minus 12 degrees lower at 850 HP. You can see all these oranges over the Arctic and all these blues heading into the mid-Atlantic. And that is what a negative AO does. It pushes all the colder air, or a lot of the colder air, out of the Arctic to the mid latitudes. And as I said, with, with this run, you see the most of the cold air actually goes towards North America um, and it's actually fueling the jet stream. So a negative AO doesn't guarantee it's cold weather. But if we did see the slight shift this negative AO in the long term, it could send things colder for the UK. So very, very interesting seeing this coming up. And again, if we go to the North America view, you can see all this bitterly cold air just towards Canada. And you can see at times plunging into the central plains. And you can see that there, negative AO, day 10, all this bitterly cold air plunging southwards towards even some of the southern states at times. Um, yeah, really, really cold conditions all just remaining over northern 
Canada. So yeah, a, a really interesting latest set of runs from the GFS. Um, I don't know it, what to take out of this, whether this is accurate or whether this just is overhyping something in the uh, atmosphere at the moment. But it's very interesting and it does give it a bit of a glimmer of hope for the middle of February. Now if we do have a look at the GM run, and we'll have a look at the Norman Hemisphere view as well, because it's not showing something anything too dissimilar to the GFS run over the next 10 days. A lot of high pressure over the next five, and then Wesley Wind's coming in. But once again, I want to watch that high pressure building over the North Pole. And you can see again that circular area of purples over the Northern Hemisphere, over the North Pole, a little bit leaking out, but generally most of it is just over the centre of the pole. Now, if we do run it on, you can see it does fragment a little bit, but generally stays right over the pole. And we see high pressure staying around the south, but generally westerly winds are in the north. We are seeing a, potentially a bit of a pattern towards day 10. Um, uh, towards day 10 of maybe a bit of a northwesterly wind. Um, you can see some high pressure trying to build up to northeast Canada. And a bit more of a westerly wind at day 10. But very, very interesting once again. You can see the purples fragmenting, some going down to eastern uh, eastern parts of Russia, so I'm going into North America, and a big lobe going towards Scandinavia. Now, this would be much better set up for the UK. You see cold air is moving down into Central America, but nowhere near as cold, with more of that cold air moving over to the opposite side of the pole. And if we do have a look at the European look, you can see jet stream is still pretty strong, but seeing a bit of blocking towards Northeast Canada, and we're actually starting to set up a north or north westerly wind. So it's not going bitterly cold, but it's definitely showing that negative AO. Again, if I go to the northern hemisphere, look, you see more blocking. You see this ridge coming in from the other side of the pole. Um, and again, these purples sort of separating away, not in a sort of a uniform circle that we're seeing them at the start of the run. So once again, GM not showing anything too spectacular. But it does reinforce the potential idea of seeing things going a bit, a bit more negative with the AO around day 10 beyond. Again, no guarantees of cold weather, as we saw with the GFS run. GFS and GM both showing a bit of a negative AO, but vastly different conditions at, um, at, well, at the surface for the UK. Uh, and that's all because the AO just shows there is blocking patterns. doesn't show where the blocks are going to be. So I have to keep an eye on this in the longer term. Could be something, a glimmer of hope for the UK. But at the same time, could just be a little bit of a falter in the models. Now, if we do look, have a look at the ECMWF, again, we'll have a look at the Northern Hemisphere view. This is from the Midnight Run, because the 12 hasn't come, come, quite come out again. So you can see all those purples over the North Pole, over the parts of Northern Canada, Greenland, real strong tropospheric polar vortex. As we move through, you can see westerly winds generally with still a lot of polar vortex strength. And we're not seeing as much of a distortion on the polar vortex from the ECMWF. We see that ridge trying to come up from Alaska. And again, if we run it on another couple of days, we would be able to see if it does go to more towards a negative AO. But this would be more of a positive AO. So as I said, it's not guaranteed by any means, but it's a bit of a glimmer of hope on some of these other runs. And once again, we are seeing that bit of a northwesterly wind again. A bit of a ridge towards northeast Canada and showing some cold air potentially coming towards the UK. So around day 10, we could be seeing a bit of a northwesterly spell, but we'll have to you know, check that out nearer the time. Uh, but again, we're looking at long-term trends specifically in this video, as over the next seven days, things don't look like they're going to be changing too much. A lot of high pressure around, and then we're going to be seeing a lot more westerly winds, probably by middle to the end of next working week. Now, if we do have a look at the GFS ensembles, now they haven't fully come out yet. Um, we can only see up to the 31st January, that's a day 10. You can see generally above or slightly, uh, around or slightly above average in general. Colder sectors come through at times, essentially, and the longer term, some are plunging quite a bit colder uh, And as we head forward towards the first few days of February. But you can see in the south, still pretty dry as we have high pressure holding on, whereas if we have a look at Glasgow, much more precipitation. Not masses, as again, high pressure is trying to hang on in the south, but it's going to be more of a westerly flow, more mixing there, so it is going to be generally a lot milder. Um, but if we do go to the 6Z run, you can see in the longer term, quite a few in around 2nd to 4th of February are dropping colder. No guarantees, of course, with this. They are trending a little bit colder. But perhaps that could be a signal some of these runs are going for a much more negative AO. Again, if we have a look at the sea level pressure, Things are generally trending lower pressure in the longer term. So it definitely does look like a westerly pattern 
but it's what happens with that negative AO if we do see it in the longer term. So things are all up in the air at the moment. We can see these things are rapidly changing each day, really. We went from guaranteed massive westerlies. And we're still seeing that a little bit today for a period of time. But after that, signals of a negative AO, which could bring more blocked patterns in again. But as I said, things can change uh, and we'll keep ha having a look at eye this over the next few days. But anyone saying winter is over, as I said, repeatedly said over the last few weeks, is not looking at the model output. Yes, we have not seen proper winter yet, but it doesn't mean that in the next sort of five weeks of meteorological winter we have left, that it's not going to arrive. No one can really accurately forecast things more than about a week ahead. And for long term trends, no one can really forecast things more than about two weeks ahead so next two weeks doesn't look massively encouraging for massive cold weather but beyond that with the potential negative ao setting up in around 10 days to 14 days time we could be going colder but i am looking much uh, much um longer range um because things look pretty set over the next seven to ten days uh, and of course this has just recently cropped up on the models now if we do finish up have a look at the five day forecast that hasn't changed too much from yesterday so i'll run through it really quite quickly you can see again generally things quite cloudy today um especially further northwards and westwards and that cloud is spilling in from the west some drizzle especially further northwards tomorrow uh tomorrow morning into the afternoon especially for scotland it's going to be quite miserable under that cloud and rain but most areas are dry but cloudy for more precipitation potentially drop southwards through early hours of monday but again not showing too much and generally things, things still really quite dry now, if we look at the max temperatures, the early this morning, really, really quite cold. One of the coldest nights of the winter for many. And I think we actually did record the coldest night of the winter um, in the south. Uh, for, yeah, for England in the south. Now, if we do have a look, uh, you see temperatures today about four, five, six degrees. Not particularly great in the south, maybe seven or eight further northwards. And by Friday evening, we're going to see temperatures once again drop to around freezing, potentially in the south. But for many areas, not too cold. And by Saturday afternoon, 6 to 8 degrees once again. So around average conditions. Saturday night, maybe a frost isolated in Wales in the far southwest, but nothing too crazy. in Sunday afternoon, once again, 5, 6, 7, or maybe 8 degrees in a few spots. Again, around average, maybe a touch below average. Sunday night, again, we could be seeing another frost across parts of Wales. And Monday, again four to seven degrees and the coldest day conditions coming in around central england and maybe parts of northern scotland so yeah nothing too majorly cold but around or slightly below average monday night to tuesday again frost where we see clearer skies wherever the cloud is will stop the frost so it's difficult to forecast because of course cloud amounts can vary very um can vary quite a lot from what the forecast is showing so could be much colder in these spots where it says two or three degrees. It could actually be minus one, minus two if we don't see the cloud build. But generally, a frost in central areas under the clearest skies. Tuesday, five to seven degrees. And once again, Wednesday, early morning could see another frost. But beyond that, you can start to see much milder air in the North Atlantic, 10 or 11 degrees. As things will generally turn more westerly from around Wednesday, Thursday onwards. And we'll see more mixing of air, meaning less, less frosts um, and more precipitation, especially further northwards. So things haven't changed too much over the next seven to 10 days, but we are seeing this negative AO signal in the longer term. It's by no means guarantees. I don't want to overhype it by any means, but I just want to show you all the evidence that's, that's out there at the moment. So you can make up your own mind um, whether we take this seriously or not. I definitely will be keeping an eye on it, but I'm not, uh, I'm not saying this is guaranteed by any means. I'm not getting my hopes up yet because I know how quickly these things can change. Again, it was showing pretty positive uh, yesterday and the day before. Before now, it's showing much negative again, and we'll have to see what happens tomorrow. But if we did see the signal sort of confirm within the models, it'll be a very interesting next week to see how it does resolve, as we'll start to see, well, if we do see a very negative AO, if that does become the theme for the first week or two of February, we will be seeing some exceptional uh, exceptionally cold runs especially from the gfs around 300 to 384 hour mark so we'll keep an eye out for those because if we do see an negative AO, we could be seeing some very cold air plunging into the mid latitudes and there will definitely be some gfs runs going well over the board with it but just going to be interesting watching what happens with this over the next few weeks winter is not dead by any means but it still uh, hasn't arrived and may not arrive for another couple weeks so anyway thanks for watching hope you enjoyed subscribe if you're new and I'll see you again for another video soon.